Let's go. Yeah. All right, everybody. So good evening. And um, pardon me if I don't open my camera right now because it might get cut off again. <laughs> so I know. But um, so it's me, Brother Ron, and uh, I'm blessed to be here. And I'm excited to share this with you because our message for tonight is about deliverance. Right. And um, I know many of you have already heard about this topic. Many of you already practice deliverance and have dealt with, uh, you know, the demonic before casting out evil spirits and, you know, um, dealing with that stuff, witnessing manifestations, this and that. Pastor Manny has taught on this many, many times. Uh, I used to teach alongside him before. And then um, this is something that, again, it's very controversial. It's very controversial to the church, but you know what? It's not supposed to be. You know, it's not supposed to be. So, um, again, I'm not sure how deep your understanding is on the matter, each of you. But I'm, I'm assuming that most of you guys already know what it is. But, okay, deliverance, is, deliverance and spiritual warfare um, are, okay, they're two different things. Okay, <laughs> two different things. You know, deliverance is not spiritual warfare. Spiritual warfare is a, maybe, a, maybe a greater... Um, like a bigger spectrum of what that actually is, right? You know, and deliverance, as we're going to discuss about it tonight, is basically just the, just the casting out of evil spirits. It's being delivered. Why is it called deliverance? Because if you, if you have an evil spirit within you, um, you're in bondage. You're a slave to something. There is something in you that's not supposed to be there. And uh, because of that, you have been influenced by the enemy to do certain things. So what did Jesus do? First John 3 verse 8 says, this is the reason that the Son of Man came is to destroy the works of the devil. You know, so um, first and most basic thing is that, you know, good equals God, bad equals devil. You know what I mean? So, I mean, that is, some, that is a line that we really have to understand. You know, God is not a God who will send evil spirits upon you regardless of, um, of your Old Testament citations from Saul or this or that. Regardless of all that, uh, that needs further explanation. But that is not, God doesn't need evil spirits to accomplish his will. And God will not allow evil spirits upon you. God does not want, God did not create you to have evil spirits within you. He created mankind according to his image. And he breathed on man, namely Adam that his spirit would dwell in man, right? So we were originally created to contain God's spirit. Basically, we're containers of the Holy Spirit through, through Adam. Now, because of sin, right? Uh, I don't know, if, I hope most of you already have um, already heard the message about spirit, soul, and body. Um, because of sin, Adam's sin, we human beings became spiritually dead. So the soul and the body is what remained and we were disconnected from God and the sin nature came alive. Okay. So because the soul and the body had no uh, spirit, no Holy Spirit, the Lord over the, the master over the, the flesh, evil spirits had their heyday in the old Testament. So they had basically their free for all, you know, most of the people in the old Testament, most of the characters in the old Testament that you would read, I wouldn't be surprised if they were demonized. You know, because they did not have a Messiah, they did not have a Christ, they did not have have uh, Jesus as their Lord and Savior. But we have a different story. You know, again, First John three eight. This is the reason the Son of Man came, and He may destroy the works of the devil. So He came here on earth and set the captives free, and became the curse, and and took out the sin nature, got nailed to the cross, gave us a new life. We are now born again, and we are now temples of the Holy Spirit, where the Holy Spirit can reside. So, you know, praise God and amen that we live in that covenant, in the new covenant. Now that Jesus has delivered us, you know, delivered us from bondage. See, here's the thing. When you say deliverance, when you say deliver, it means you take something from somewhere and bring it somewhere else. Okay? So, you know, deliverance is not, okay, let's try, and then, yeah, you're still like that, and then let's just, you know, keep it that way, and... Let's just go back and go back and go back and just keep on doing deliverance until one day maybe the demons get tired. You know, that's not deliverance. When you say deliverance, you're supposed to be delivered from somewhere to somewhere. And, and, and if you look at, um, where was that? Let me just open my Bible. 
in, I believe it's Colossians 1.14. I just want to make sure I get it right. Okay. Or Colossians 1.13, rather. Yeah. So Colossians 1.13 in the New King James reads, um, he has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of his son, of the son of his love in whom we have the redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. So, you know, deliverance isn't just, you know, casting out demons and getting rid of evil spirits and people, right? It's, it's, it's knowing what Jesus did and enforcing what Jesus did, right? So, um, I, I, there's so much I want to say. I don't know where to start, you know? Um, okay. Coming from a conservative Christian's perspective, coming from a, uh, let's start with that, because I think most of us have come from that background here in this group. So if you're coming from a conservative Christian's perspective, if you come from a Baptist or evangelical or whatever uh, uh, theology, right, the theological background, if people say deliverance, it's normally, oh, those people who use the name of Jesus to cast out demons and they start vomiting or spitting or saying bad words and doing weird stuff. And then they lay hands and they command demons to get out in Jesus' name. And, um, you know, that's, that's a very simplistic explanation or approach to it. But, you know, that's not all that happens. If you think that's deliverance, you may not experience deliverance. You know? Because nowhere in Scripture does it say that uh, you shall cast out demons and you will be set free. No, it doesn't say that um, that you will have deliverance and then you will be free. No, 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 no. It says in John 8, 32, that you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Okay. So why is it that I want to deal with this? Because guys, I've seen a lot of people jump into the whole casting out demons and deliverance and vomiting and manifesting demons and people contorting and doing weird sounds and stuff. And, you know, for some people, it freaks them out. For some people, they think it's really cool. Um, and they, they get a power trip like, oh, the demons respond to me, you know, and uh, you know, if you go to Luke 10, you know what Jesus says about that. Do not rejoice that the demons, you know, it's not that they respond to you. It's not that they get out in, in, uh, through your commands, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. You know, so it's not about just the casting out or whatever. It's not about just getting rid of the demons. It's about Jesus, you know, and I want to offer that perspective tonight because, okay, how do you cast out a demon? cast them out in the name of Jesus. It's not your name. It's not your power. It's not your authority. It's the name of Jesus. You know, uh, it matters that you stand in that authority. It matters that you have a relationship with Christ. You will see in the book of Acts that people who tried to use the name of Jesus were, you know, very, very much embarrassed after that demonic encounter when the demon did not leave and yet overcame them instead because they did not really believe in Jesus. They just used his name. So, um, but here's the thing, guys. I've been ministering deliverance for the past, what, like almost five years now. And, um, you know, I started out casting out, casting out, casting out. And these people would just come back. And they'd be in the same hole that they were. They're like, bro, I felt better. Praise God. And then, but three days later, the depression came in and this happened. And I got this text message and I can't sleep anymore. And this, it's like a cycle. And then, that people go from deliverance to deliverance to deliverance. But I mean, if, I, if you say delivered, I'm, taking, I'm, I'm being taken from somewhere to somewhere. In Colossians 1.13 uh, says that you were delivered. That's past tense. From the power of darkness, from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom and conveyed and delivered to the kingdom of, of the son of his love. So, what happened? Why is it that, you know, some people, even though they know how to cast out demons and they cast out, cast out, cast out, whatever, and, and reject and bind and they, they do all this weird stuff, you know, they never really experience true freedom. That's because they don't have the truth. You know, so what, why do demons want to enter people in? You know, well, I, I know you guys have a lot of questions on this and I'm going to try to answer as many of them as I can today. Um, right. But, um, why do demons want to enter people anyway? So what are demons? Demons are basically, they are evil spirits, but they don't have bodies. That's why they need to inhabit someone or something. You know, and that something has to be living. And as much as possible, they don't want it to be an animal 
or anything else because it's useless to be an animal. It's useless to do any of that. The point of um, what do what do demons want and what does Satan want? John ten ten, the thief has come, but to only but to steal, kill, and destroy. So there's nothing good, really. There's nothing good. They're up to no good. They just want you dead. They want you sick. They want you broken. Why do they hate us so much? Because we were made in the image and likeness of God. Plain and simple. So they can't get to God. They can't harm God. God is all-powerful. The next thing, next best thing that they could do is, you know, is, is steal, kill, and destroy his children. Because they know that would affect God. That's why they hate us so much. That's why they, they want to steal, kill, and destroy. Because we were made after the image and likeness of God. So now, um, um, so now, what is it? What else do they want from us? How do they do this? How do they do this? So if you were living in the old covenant, or if you were a non-believer, you did not have Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, then that's a free-for-all. They will enter any opening you can, any inherited curses, any, any open doors from sin, favorite sin, unrepentant sin, unforgiveness, um, lust, you know, addictions, pornography, stuff like that. Those are all open doors for demons to enter. And if you do not have Jesus Christ, it's a free-for-all. They will turn you into a buffet, you know? And uh, that's why some people are like, ah, I don't get it. I keep on doing this thing. I keep on going back to it. I don't have the power to overcome. If you read Romans 7, that talks about what happens when you don't have Jesus Christ, right? But if you read Romans 8, the following chapter, that tells you that this is what we have now that we have Jesus Christ. So if you are a born-again believer and you have Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, um, you have the Holy Spirit, you're a temple of the Holy Spirit, but your flesh is fallen, okay? Your flesh is fallen. So the demons cannot affect your spirit because your spirit is one with the Holy Spirit, but they can affect your flesh. They can affect your soul. They can affect your body. So even if you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you know, if you do not, um, if you do not turn away from sin, you do not turn away, you continue on, I don't know, gambling or pornography or, or immoral relationships or a third party in your marriage or whatever, you know, it's not God who does the disciplining to you as whatever, as recourse. No, no, no. You actually open up the doors for Satan to enter your life. You know, it's, it's funny. In this group, we talk a lot about God allows this, God allows that, does God allow this. It's, God is not your problem. When you sin, it's not God who's your problem. Because as far as God is concerned, First John 2, 2, Jesus has, uh, Jesus has dealt with the sin of the world. Not only our sin. He was a propitiation not only for our sin, but sin of the sins of the world. So as far as God is concerned, sin is dealt with. So when you commit sin, God is not your problem. When you commit sin... You open the door for Satan to enter your life. You open the door for the evil spirits to go in and have a free-for-all in your soul and body. And that's how people get tormented. You know, you know it's foolish to think that, oh, Christians can't be demonized. I understand what people are trying to say in that perspective. That if no true born-again believer who is filled with the spirit and da -da 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 -da, this and that. I, I get you. I get that perspective and I agree with it. But really, who... Who can judge who a true believer is and not? It's only between you and God, you know? So I, I don't want to make a ruling on that. I don't want to say, oh, Christians can't be demonized. Christians, Christians can't. You know, no, according to your faith, only you know your true relationship with God, you know? But um, you got to be really careful, you know? So I'm not saying that we live in fear because we are not to be afraid of the enemy, right? Perfect love casts out fear in First John 4. So if we understand God's love, we, were not, we are not living in fear. We are not to fear a defeated enemy. Because 1 John 4 verse 4, greater is he who is in us than he who is in the world. So, I mean, that's a verse in the Bible, but do you believe it wholeheartedly? Do you believe that the enemy is defeated? Do you believe that the enemy is inferior? Do, do you believe that Satan is a pathetic defeated foe that he honestly doesn't have any power? The only power he has is deception, you know, manipulation, lying, that stuff. But if you, if you fear Satan, if you're afraid of demons, if you're afraid of all that stuff, then you allow them access into your life. You know, I'm kind of going everywhere right now because I just, you know, as the spirit leads, you know, I got verses down here, but I just want to speak from the heart because this is a topic 
that has been greatly misrepresented by the church. I'm not talking about a particular church. I'm talking about the body of Christ in general. That a lot of the conservative Christians frown upon it because, you know, they think it's weird or because of the, 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 uh, the more liberal Christians, I guess, if you want to call them, who openly practice this, they become really superstitious. They start yelling. They start employing different means and this and that. And, oh, you got to do this. You, they put steps. And, oh, you got to spray some water on it first. Then you got to confess. Then you do this. Then you, you draw a bloodline. You got to verbally do this. And, and you know, it's just, it's a joke. Because Jesus didn't do any of that. Every time Jesus dealt with a demon, he, he dealt with him very simply. You know? It's like you don't have to trouble yourself to squish an ant. You don't have to, you know, do a ceremony just to get rid of an ant. Again, you're dealing with a defeated enemy. You know, if, if you understood your identity in Christ, demons would, would flee upon your arrival. You know, demons would flee. You don't even have, Jesus didn't have to say, okay, you got to renounce each sin one by one. You fill out this form and then let's read and let's renounce each sin. So you don't have to do that. Jesus has said, you know what? out or go or be gone or whatever you know just, just you're healed and that's it and the demons would leave and that's it you know so it doesn't have to be complicated because it's not complicated it's religion that makes it complicated so what the tone that i want to set especially with all of you guys here this evening is deliverance is very much normal in the christian faith and it doesn't have to be weird the moment you make it weird you start misrepresenting what Jesus has done on the cross. It's not supposed to be weird. It's not supposed to be part of every believer's life. Wait, it's wait, part wait, wait, wait. Of the believer's Rewind. 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 Go. You were choppy a while ago. Probably like a 15 sec, 10 second rewind. <laughs> Say it again. What happened? Sorry. You were choppy. We lost you for a bit. Hello, hello. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. You're good now. Okay. No, I was just saying that it, it's not even supposed to be like a dedicated ministry. The deliverance, this healing, this everything. We're teaching you guys about this, about biblical healing and deliverance here in this group. We want to equip you. No. But it's not supposed to be, oh, we're a healing ministry. Oh, we're, we're, oh, we're all about deliverance. You got deliverance issues, call us. That's not, not believer has the power of the Holy Spirit. Every spirit-filled believer has, um, has the authority. Yo. Wait, wait, yeah. wait, 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 wait. You were choppy again. Every believer has the authority. You were trying to say that, that it's not, it's not uh, compartmentalized like, oh, this is the healing group. Oh, this is the deliverance group. And then this is the, I don't know, whatever they want to name it group. Go. Amen. Well, um, but my point is because the moment you start doing that, it gets weird. Instead of bringing people closer, it pushes people away. You know, it allows pride to come in. Oh, that I'm the super duper. I'm the, this is my calling. I'm called to do this. You know, it's, it's not. It's not. Every believer has this. And, uh, you know, my kids cast out demons. My kids pray for the healing. It's so normal that it's not supposed to be super sensational. You know, John 14, 12, Jesus said, you will do the same works and even greater works than these for I go to the Father. So. When Jesus went to the Father, you have the Holy Spirit. So now, it's supposed to be a normal thing. That if you have the Holy Spirit, which all of us do, this is something that you can practice regularly and without being weird. About. You know, I, I remember before, um, I was asked to minister in church about um, the deliverance, right? Because they had a really bad case of some lady who went to the witch doctor and she was severely possessed. Her eyes were rolling into her head and stuff like that. Really weird stuff. And um, so they called, I did not know, but they apparently called some people before me 
to go there and, you know, cast out demons or do whatever, and it didn't work. After a while, it was after the service, and I, I went to the person, and then she started manifesting and, and, uh, and crying and wailing. And I just said, you know what? I command you to be quiet in Jesus' name, and I, I, I forbid you for making a scene and making a fuss. Leave quietly in Jesus' name. Out. Tapos bilang ayun, bilang she started crying, started breathing, and she's like, oh, where am I? You know, tapos meron pa palang may nakatali pang talisman sa waist niya or whatever. I was like, what is that? So, we just, you know, we just threw it, canceled, all that stuff. It was so normal. And the pastor came to me and said, pwede palang ganun, pastor. Pwede palang ganun. Pwede palang be quiet. Kasi dati nung pinag-pray, sinisigawan nila yung demonyo. Sabi ko, di naman bingi yung demonyo. You don't have to shout at demons. You don't have to you don't have to speak King James English to cast out a demon. You know, you don't have to say, in the Lord said, any of those. You don't have to sound like a black preacher to, to get demons to respond. You don't need to do that. You just tell them very simply, just get out in Jesus' name. Because it's not about what you do. It's not about how well you've studied or how many books you've read or, or what experience you have. It's all about Jesus. You know, uh, deliverance, I know there are a lot of deliverance books out there. I've read many many of them you know if you see my library at home you're gonna laugh you know because i got i got hundreds and hundreds of books all over um that i sourced out from from all over the u.s here because i wanted to learn you know but i realized that when you read books about deliverance it's just experiences of other people you know and you can't make formulas the moment you make a formula it might work the first time but demons aren't stupid They've been around longer than any of us. They know how humans think. They know how people think. The moment you create a formula or a step, they already know. You know, so it's, it's foolish and absolutely absurd to try to come up with a formula. This is how you cast out a demon. First, renounce the sin. Number two, recite this. You know, what, 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 what is the Holy Spirit for if we will replace him with uh, steps and procedures? So as far as deliverance is concerned, you know, my, my suggestion is not just to read books. I mean, go ahead. If you want to read books, go ahead. You know, but don't make formulas out of it. My, my encouragement for you guys is if you want to understand deliverance truly, and wait, wait, go. Uh, that's what I hate. You're right, Brother Nick. We good? Are you? Yeah. Okay. Go. Go. Okay. No, I said because there there are no two exact same situations. You know, uh, when you minister to people, each person is different. Each person is unique. You know, perhaps the entry point of 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 uh, of a demon for one person may not be the same entry point for another person. Maybe a traumatic experience is what opened the door for the other, and the other one did, I don't know, whatever it is. But my point is, you can't make formulas. There are guidelines that may be this, may be that, but, you know, at the end of the day, if you depend on the Holy Spirit, and you know, and you hear his voice, and you guys are close, you know, like you really discern his voice, he will reveal things to you. You know, like, like something really, really intimate. Um, you know, it, it's kind of it's it's kind of weird sometimes because the way you minister to people, like for deliverance, um, like me personally, I've had experiences where I I've, I've actually seen, like, their past or like that moment. You know what I mean? That 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 moment that they had that trouble, and I was like, okay, did this happen? And they get freaked out. It's like, how do you know that? I was like, I don't. It's the Holy Spirit who will be there. And then we deal with that situation. Then we shut that door from the enemy and we surrender to Jesus. And that's more than just, you know, a verbal reciting of, oh, I renounce this in Jesus' name. Again, we can't, we can't really fool demons. You can't, you could probably fool them once or twice, but they're not, they're not stupid. You know, they know if you really believe in Jesus or not. Ah, no, one testimony. I remember before. Uh, this lady, this lady attended one of um, 
one of our services, and she was uh, very active in uh, in a ministry that practiced deliverance all the time. And then she had like pain here and pain there and problems with her stomach or something like that. And I don't know, she needed an operation. And, you know, during that service, during the altar call, I called out for healing and I cast out certain spirits as the spirit led me. And, um, and I said, be God in Jesus' name. And then she came up to me and she was like, I've, I've never felt this free. I've never felt this light. You know, the pain is gone. The pain is, is, is not there anymore. And I know that I've been set free. And uh, I praise God for this encounter, this experience. And then the next day, I get a call from, uh, from her friend. She says, bro, bumalik yung mga pain, bumalik yung mga spirit. Sabi ko, bakit? Kasi daw, when she woke up, nag-cast out ulit siya ng demons. Okay? So, ano masama doon? Na, sanay daw siya. So, I cast out the spirit of ito. Cast out the spirit of ito. So, sabi, sabi niya, at that moment, dun bumalik lahat ng pain. Sabi niya, bakit daw ganun? Sabi ko, why would you cast out the demon that already left? So the problem is that that lady never really believed that she was freed from those sickness. You, you, you see what I'm trying to say? She was just superstitious about it. Oy, nakast out. Uy, galing, gumana, ganito, ganyan. Pero the next day, di ba? The next day, sige, cast out natin para sigurado. Yeah, nag-doubt ka. So sabi ng demons, ah, hindi naniwala to. O, oh, balik tayo sa loob. Hindi niya pala, hindi pala naniniwala. True story. You know? And um, I think... I have that testimony from the person written down somewhere, but okay, stop if you can hear me. Anyway, okay, there, there. No, my, my point is, is that demons aren't stupid, They're horrible formulas. Deliverance is something that will come about naturally if you're attentive to the Holy Spirit. The root of having, um, of being a successful deliverance minister is knowing your identity in Christ. It's not about you. It's not about the number of books you've read. It's not the number of demons you've dealt with before. It's not because you're part of this ministry or that ministry or you have a team or, or may isa sa inyo nagtatangs or ganyan. Hindi yun yung point. Yung point dito is... Kilala mo ba kung sino ka in Christ? Like, do you have that identity? Do you know who you are? Do you understand who is in you? Do you understand 1 John 4, 4, that greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world? Like, do you really understand what Jesus did on the cross? Do you understand how, how, um, how massive that authority is of Jesus Christ here on earth? Do you understand that God's will for you is to be free, to be prospered, to be whole, sozo, that he gives soteria, salvation, that, that, that it's not just forgiveness of sins, but, but prosperity and protection and freedom and wholeness and everything, that he came to set you free, you know, of all bondage, not just some things. And if you understand that, that truth, that will set you free, you know? So it's not just deliverance that sets you free. If you, if you, if you got, if there's a spirit in front of you, then deal with it. If someone's manifesting in front of you, then deal with it. You know, cast it out. The name of Jesus, be quiet. Shut up. I'm not, I'm not going to waste my time on demons. So I bind you, I silence you, I cast you out in Jesus' name. Then done. That's it. Then you move forward. So, but people come to me and say, brother, can you pray deliverance over this person? I'm like, pare, ginawa mo naman akong, ano? Ginawa mo naman akong parang gamot. Sige. You pray over mo para maayos. I mean, that's not how it works. You know, actually, that does more harm. You know, the moment you start... Ron, um, Ron, Ron. Yeah. Hindi ka ginagawa ang gamot. Ginagawa kang pamalo kasi ang laki mo raw eh. Yun yun. Ay, well, ganun din yun. Pero kawawa yung tao. <laughs> Di ba? Sa so Matthew, so Matthew, uh, Matthew 12 kasi, you know, there's a remarkable scripture here in Matthew 12 verses 43 to 45. I'm going to read that in the New King James. It says... When an unclean spirit goes out of a man, he goes through dry places seeking rest and finds none. Then he says, I will return to my house from which I came. Talking about the man's body, his, his soul and his body, right? And when he comes, he finds it empty, swept, and put in order. Verse 45, it says, 
then he goes and takes with him seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter and dwell there. And the last state of the man is worse than the first. So shall it also be with this wicked generation. So these are red letters. This is the word, these are the words of Jesus. So don't turn deliverance into just some, some magic pill. Or like what Brother Nick said, na pamalo. Na tigas ng ulo nitong anak ko. Ayaw mag-obey. Cast out mga demon niya. How, diba? how sure are you it's a demonic problem? You know, how sure are you that it's a, it, it, it might do more harm than good? And honestly, again, I got a lot of calls for deliverance, cast this out, cast that out. And I don't say yes to a lot of them. And I, but I do say yes to, I want to talk to the person. And if I establish that the person does want to receive truth, does want to change, does, has that, if, if the person has the will to really, to really say that, you know, I, I want a new life. I'm tired of this. I want to turn away. I'm going to share truth with you first. I'll, I'll, talk, I'll talk to you about your identity in Christ. I'll talk to you about what Jesus did on the cross. I'll talk to you about God's love for you in every single way. And, and I'll, I'll, I'll show you God's goodness and grace through scripture. Then I'll cast out those spirits. You know, because the moment you start sharing about truth and identity, the enemy doesn't have the grip anymore on the person. You know, so, you know, my comment about Catholic exorcism and what, and you know what, it works. Catholic exorcism works because they still use the name of Jesus. But even though it works, it's not effective. Because it's not effective because there's no truth and the demons come back and the person gets worse over and over and over and over again. So, you know, pag nakast out mo yung demon, hindi dahil magaling ka. Hindi dahil tama ka. Hindi dahil tama yung alam mo. It's simply and purely by God's grace. That's it. If the demon leaves, it's because God loves his children. Regardless if you're correct or in error or whatever, yung point nun is sobrang mahal ni God yung anak niya. Diba? Yung name ni Jesus nandun para maset free yung anak niya. So kahit you know, I've, 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 I've read some deliverance books before about these people who started doing weird, uh, r repeating verses over and over again. Tapos na pray ng pray, beg ng beg kay God for like three, four days. Tapos yung demon na cast out din. It wasn't because they were correct. It's because God loves his children. So again, don't create formulas. Hindi porque, ah, itong si ganito, ito yung ginawa niya, gayahin natin. Ah, itong ganito, ginawa niya ganyan. So, it's possible na yun yung leading the Holy Spirit for that person. But, you know, don't make it automatically, oh, ito yung ginawa niya, so ito rin gagawin ko. I don't know. Listen to your own leading. Look for your own, um, look for your own voice in, that, in your heart through the Holy Spirit. Now, oh Lord, anong gagawin ko dito? How do I deal with this? Remember, God is a personal God. He's not a God of formulas. We no longer live under the law. We live under grace, right? So, you know, Deliverance is something that we should clarify. Can everyone cast out demons? Yes, definitely. Will demons leave the person that you're, you're praying for or what? Not all the time. Why? Kasi yung iba, ayaw nila paalisin yung demon. Okay? And that's a harsh reality. And people would get offended when I say that. You know, because um, there was a time na may nag-manifest and they to cast out, cast out, cast out. Ang tagal na, they were praying and sabi ko, you know what guys, let's stop. Sabi ko, why? Bakit stop? Hindi pa nag-manifest pa. Sabi ko, hindi, wala namang balak magbago yun. Sobrang na-offensaan yung tao. You know, sobrang na-offensaan yung tao. Pero totoo. Sabi ko, you know what, you can get mad at me all you want, but that's the truth and you need to wake that up because you don't want to give up your life to Christ. So what we're doing here will actually harm you more. I'm going to do you a favor and not continue to do this. So, you know, guys, I know some of you have made it yung kilay. So we will grab your brother on yabang. That's not the point. The point is, I'm actually concerned for the guy because you're going to get seven times more demons than what you're casting out. And the state of the man is going to be worse than the first. And you don't want that. So your first resort is not deliverance. Your first resort is to give the love of God. Romans 2, 4 says, don't you know that it is the goodness of God that leads to repentance? If the person is unrepentant, wag mo na deliverance. Share mo na lang gospel. You know, people, can, people ask me, Brother Ron, pwede bang mag-deliverance ng non-believer? Pwede. Pwede, pwede. 
Kasi minsan, nagagamit yun to introduce the gospel. It's called the power encounter. May ganyan dati na parang non-believer, ganito, and nag-manifest siya after noon, naniwala siya. So that's possible. But, it's not a formula. May mga iba, non-believer, talagang ayaw nila. So, wala din. Point. You know, kahit na anong cast out mo, hindi pwede kasi walang right si Jesus sa, sa life niya. You know? Totoo lang, guys. May, may, meron kasing rules yung spiritual realm. May mga legal right din. You know, so, does you ask yourself, does the Holy Spirit have a full legal right to your spirit, soul, and body? You know, and, and if you want to assure yourself that I'm free, I'm free from bondage, I'm free from any evil oppression, I'm free from any evil spirits, then check yourself, check yourself. Do you have, you know, have you, have you yielded all, like, the full legal right to the Holy Spirit, to Jesus Christ, your spirit, your soul, and body? Like, ang lahat yan belong ba sa niya? O meron ka pang mga tinitira sa mundo? Kasi kung anong ititira mo sa mundo, pwede nilang masita. You know? So don't, don't live in fear. I'm not telling you to live in fear. I'm just telling you to have a heart that's open to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. So when the Holy Spirit calls something out, na, hey, you know, you deal with this. May rejection ka sa heart mo. Hey, you deal with this. That was a really prideful statement. I mean, what's the root of that? If you talk to the Holy Spirit like that, ma-uncover yung mga potential openings sa buhay mo. You know? So, um, the focus is not demons. The focus is Jesus Christ. Let's not make deliverance weird. Let's not make deliverance complicated. Deliverance is very, very simple. It's just, it's an expression of God's love for his children that he gave us a way to be free from the oppression of evil spirits. Guys, you know, it's a command to resist the devil, right? You, you see that in, in, in James 4, 7, submit yourselves therefore to God and, and resist the devil and he will flee from you. It's a command. It's a command to fight these evil spirits. It's a command to 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 deal with with this at um to deal with the enemy in a vicious manner because they don't deserve any mercy. Diba? Nag-render judgment na si God sa kanila. Tapon silang imperno. Diba? Di, sila nga, di maawa sa atin. Why would we why would we give them any space or any, you know, we, we go head on. Resist the devil. He will flee from you. It's a command. Even in 1 John, ah, sorry, 1 Peter 5 pala yun. 1 Peter 5, uh, 8. Basahin ko to. 1 Peter 5, 8. It says, be sober, be vigilant. Because your adversary, your adversary, kalaban mo, the devil walks about like a roaring lion seeking who he may devour. Resist him steadfast in the faith, knowing the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in this world. So, saan galing yung suffering? Sa devil. Di ba? All over the world. Si Satan nandyan. He's walking around like a roaring lion. But check this out. I want you to highlight this. Your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking who he may devour. Who he may. You need to give him permission to devour you. You know, you need to give him permission. It's your call. It's not, oh Lord, save mo ako sa demonyo. No, 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 no. God gave you the name of Jesus. God gave you the Holy Scriptures. God gave you the Holy Spirit, the authority of Jesus Christ. God gave you the name above all names to use to cast out these demons. God gave you uh, Mark 16, 17, and 18, a promise that all those who believe will lay hands on the sick. They will get healed. They will cast out demons. They will, they will do all these things. You know, you have... You have victory in you already through Christ. So you first Peter 5 8, the devil will seek who he may devour. So are you giving him permission? Are you allowing it? It's not God who allows, it's it's us. Are we allowing the demons to oppress us? Is there something that we can't give up? Is there something that, that we can't surrender to Jesus? Is there something maybe that we're not even aware of? Because you can't fix a problem that you don't know about. And if you have a problem that you don't know about, that means you got to spend more time with the Holy Spirit because he knows everything. He'll reveal everything to you. So, you know, again, guys, I don't really have a, a specific outline or whatever. I just have verses right now. Pero, sana makita niyo yung picture. Now, this is all about Jesus. It's not about demons. It's not about you. It's not about me. It's not about what, what we know. It's not about the techniques of how to cast out demons. It's about Jesus. Grabe, yun ba talaga? Kung tatayuan mo yung authority na yan, or kung, kung tayuan mo yung true identity mo in Christ. You know, we had, that one, we had one fellowship before. Um, 
so West to have Brother Nick's been there. I think Brother Nick was there at that time, you know. So, you know, there was a there was a lady. Well, I've ministered to her before, you know, probably a couple of years back, and I know that she has a lot of spiritual problems, and this and that. She was there. She showed up and she she was asking for prayer. And when she started gagging, no malapas na nagmanifest and suha na sabi ko, be silent. I forbid you to manifest. No negotiations. Get out in Jesus' name. Tapos, five minutes done. Wala na suka, wala na ano. Yung iba, tumakbo, kumukuha ng basurahan. Sabi ko, di kailangan yan. You don't need that. No, you don't need that. It's just love of God. And I just spoke love over that person. You know what? That person is free now. And that person is continuing on in the faith and continuing on in the ministry and, and faithfully attending and seeking the truth. You know, so, guys, it's, it's, the, it's the truth that sets you free. It's... John 8, 32, you shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. We are ministers of God's word. We are ministers of truth. Deliverance, deal with demons as necessary. No need to highlight, no need to make it super spectacular. It's super normal. You know, you see someone who's sick, man healing. You see someone troubled, you see someone uh, exhibiting some weird uh, erratic behavior, and you discern there's a spirit, cast it out in the name of Jesus, deal with it. Someone manifests in front of you, deal with it, cast it out in Jesus' name. You know? But at the end of the day, don't forget to be attentive to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Because there are times also, this is practical advice, that the Holy Spirit will tell you, it's not your fight. It's not your fight. Just speak blessing. It's not your fight. Just pray for them. Speak life upon them. Bless them. Share my love with them. Kasi kung hindi, demons sometimes, they're going to waste your time. They'll waste your time, tag teaming, just, you know, uh, push and pull game, tatago yan, tapos lalabas, iba na naman yung lalabas, ibang voice na naman. And they're just going to waste your time and tire you out and do this and do that. You know? Ang importante yung truth. Hindi lang yung cast out. You know, there are, there are times na the, the spirits will block the person from understanding the truth and the gospel you know i am we had a we had a recent we had a workshop last weekend um and uh, we received a testimony from from someone na dati hindi niya daw maintindihan yung turo ng metanoia hindi talaga kahit na anong gawin niya like nanonood siya parang hindi talaga pumapasok kahit na anong mangyayari tapos pinagpray siya ni brother eric you know and after after niya ma-pray, nung pag-message na, biglang krabi ang linaw ng lahat. You know, what's your reference verse for something like that? 2 Corinthians 4, verse 4. Let's go there. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 4. Just so you know what Satan and his, his minions want to do. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 4. It says, Whose minds the God of this age, this God of this world, has blinded, who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. So, what Satan wants is to blind the minds of the unbelieving right? so that they could not receive the light of the glory of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So, yung mga iba, parang kahit na anong share mo ng gospel, di pumapasok. Kahit na anong share mo ng ganito, di pumapasok. You know, then it might be a spiritual problem. Then deal with it, you know. Anything blocking the word of God um, in this person right now, I reject you. We cast you out in the name of Jesus. We cancel whatever hold you have in this person, anything preventing uh, this person from receiving revelation knowledge from the Holy Spirit, any, anything blocking their spiritual eyes and spiritual ears from hearing God himself through his word, we cancel and reject in the name of Jesus. We cast you out and forbid you from, from, from being here in the name of Jesus. We forbid, so we forbid you from coming back. Tapos. Sige, basa kang Bible. May spirit nga yan. Ito, ito, kwento ko sa personal testimony. May spirit nga yan na pagbukas mo ng Bible, aantukin ka. You know? May ganyan. So I'm not saying lahat na, uy, patay, patay ako, pag inantok. No, 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 no. Don't, 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 get, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying every person who gets sleepy when they read the Bible has a spirit, okay? But this is a personal testimony. Na the first time I really decided, just have to go, Lord, I'm gonna go all out. I'm gonna start reading my Bible. I wanna know your word. Pagbukas ko ng Bible, biglang mga three minutes na, I started nodding off. I was like, grabe, like, what is this? So I, I, I reached out to one of my mentors. And I was like, bro, what get ito? As in, I close my Bible. I, I'm not sleepy anymore. And I go out, I do watch TV or do something. And I open my Bible and start reading. After like four lines, I start getting sleepy. Sabi niya, sabi niya, renounce mo. Let's cast out my spirit causing the sleepiness in Jesus' name. Sabi ko, 
And I got angry. And I got angry. I was like, how dare this thing try to prevent me from reading my Bible? You know, so it wasn't just the declaration that I said. It was my heart decision to say, you know what, get out in Jesus' name. Whatever is causing me to, to, to be sleepy, you know, spirit of slumber or whatever you are. I bind you and cast you out in Jesus' name. And after that, Lana, never know. You know, so there are things like that na possible na to deal with. But again, don't make it a formula. At the end of the day, guys, at the end of the day, the very root of this, I mean, I could go on hours and hours and hours talking about deliverance and all the testimonies and, and, grabe, may time pa yan, nag-deliverance ako, 850 yung attendees. Uh, no exaggeration, you know, there are a lot of people who are, you know, uh, at least 60, 65 people were down on the floor in the front row manifesting. Most of them leaders of the church, leaders of the, you know, and, you know, I, I have a lot of crazy experiences with this stuff. I have, grabe, grabe talaga. You know, so uh, some people think na ako pur word lang against ako sa supernatural. No, 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 no. I have a lot of testimonies. I have a lot of encounters. It's just that I don't want to sensationalize it. Because it doesn't help. When you sensationalize it, you attract the wrong people. You attract the people who are superstitious about it. It doesn't help. It doesn't give true freedom. Guys, focus on tayo sa word. Focus tayo kay Jesus Christ. Focus tayo kung sino siya at sino ikaw na meron ka ng Christ. And everything else will follow. Everything else will follow. Diba? So, you know, I'm, you know, I'm not going to extend too much on that. I'm going to go for questions now. Diba? I'm going to go for questions now. And uh, I know you guys have a lot of questions. And if you want, I can do another session on this with a more structured message. But I just wanted to make this casual, you know, and share my heart with you guys. Kasi, you know, these past years, nga, ang dami ko na experience sa deliverance. Mula nung umpisa na, okay, cast out, cast out, laban, balik, balik, pagod, ganito. Sabi ko, may balik. But today, deliverance, takes, it takes just, it's very quick, very painless, very, honestly, super effortless. Although, ang investment ng effort ko is, I will minister truth to you. I will minister love to you. I will minister grace to you. Kasi without that foundation, kahit na anong tumbling o cast out ang gawin mo, wala. Babalik lang. But if I give you the truth and you receive the truth in your heart, you will be safe. The enemy has no place to make to, to go into anymore. The enemy will lose its grip. The enemy will be uprooted in your life. Kasi the moment they, they want to plant lies, they want you to agree with them. The moment you agree with them, you open the door for them. So let's agree with the word of God. Diba? Iba rin yan, dami yan. Dami ko pwede to dito. Power of agreement, power of declaration, ano yung mga curses, self-inflicted curses, inherited curses, ano ba talagang curse, ano bang ginawa ni Jesus about that. You know, there's just so much about, about sin. Sin is an open door. Can you do this? Can you do that? daming pwedeng pag-usapan dito. Pero guys, punot dulo nito. The whole foundation of everything. Balikan mo identity mo in Christ. Balikan mo yung intim intimacy mo with the Holy Spirit. When you have that, he will lead you through. Even if you haven't read a single deliverance book, even if you've never cast out a demon before, if you are intimate with the Holy Spirit and you know his voice, and again, Jesus said, my sheep, no, they hear my voice, they know my voice. They will not listen to the enemy because they, it's a stranger in it. Pag alam mo yung voice ni Holy Spirit, alam mo yung voice ni God, he'll lead you through it. He'll guide you every step of the way. And you have nothing to fear. Remember 1 John 5, 8. He is seeking who he may devour. You have to give him permission to devour. You have to allow Satan to devour. And I know nobody here in this group or nobody watching this is going to do that. So, balikan natin yun. You know, focus tayo sa cross. Focus tayo sa love ni God. Focus tayo sa identity. Focus tayo kung sino ba talaga si Christ and anong meron natin now that we have Christ. Everything else will follow. So, Amen. You know, and um, I'll go for, I think there's some questions here. I'll read through some of this. Okay. Our comments pala tong iba, some of the verses. And um, from Janabi, sabi niya, uh, I used to have Benedictine medal, that is so for the bad spirit, the Holy Spirit, sober, sober, no need for that. Amen, sister. Yung mga priests, they have Latin prayers na sinasabi. Actually, minsan, yung mga Latin prayers, incantation, baka nag-i-invite pa ng kapalit na demonyo. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, by the way, meron, may ganun, ha? Yung mga may demon sila, tapos dinala sa witch doctor, tapos gumaling, that's possible. Pero pinapalitan nila ng ibang demons yun, ng mas malakas. So, may kapalit lang yun. Witchcraft is never an option and it's never good. Um, from Sister Ina, na-witness ko yun, bro. Takbo, kuha tissue, waste can. Kasi parang masusuko na, pero pinatahimik. Oh, yes, you were there nga, sister. That's right, I remember that. From Sister Cha, in what situation should a believer plead the blood of Jesus? Is it necessary since we are already covered because of the finished work of the cross? Very good question, sister. You know, um, kahit anong plead natin ng blood of Jesus, medyo walang kwenta kung hindi naintindihan ng tao. You know, you know it's um, walang point. Yung point nun is yung tao naintindihan kung ano dapat yung blood of Jesus. Now, okay, in the extreme cases, in the extreme cases that the person is mentally incapacitated, that the person cannot understand, or the, the, maybe the person has uh, brain damage or something, or something wrong. Talagang, alam mong may sira, may ano, or may, may, may chemical problem sa utak. Then you speak healing and restoration over their mind, physically, so that they would understand God's word. Then you minister God's word. Right? So that's a, that's a, that's a tip na, ano. Pero, yung sa plead ng blood ni Jesus, uh, ako, hindi mo kailangan i-plead kasi binigay na. It's done. It's more on, I declare. I declare that we have the blood of Jesus. I don't have to plead for it. I don't have to beg for it. I don't have to ask for it. I have it. I'm covered, you know? So I'm just announcing to the enemy right now in the name of Jesus, I'm reminding the enemy that I am covered by the blood of Jesus. This person is covered by the blood of Jesus, their spirit, their soul, their body. And this is what happens when you have the blood of Jesus. You are redeemed. You, you are victorious. You are more than a conqueror in him. Greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. That we are free indeed because the Son has set us free. That we do not have any curses because Jesus himself became the curse for us. Right? That we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. This is what we have because of the blood of Jesus Christ. So it's more on uh, declaring anong meron natin because of the blood of Jesus rather than hinihingi pa natin. You know what I mean? Or, or pleading for it. Um, so, okay. The devil have ranked from powerful to less powerful. Yes, brother. That's actually, you know, if you look at Ephesians 6, 12, uh, you will see na may, meron din silang hierarchy. May kingdom din si Satan. Kingdom of darkness din siya. You know, and in Ephesians 6, 12, you will see a little bit about how Paul talks about yung principalities. Diba? Sabi niya, sa na and principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, of this age, spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. So, may, may mga iba iba yan. May mga, um, people ask me this all the time. San galing ang demonyo? There's no answer in the Bible. I have a personal opinion, but I don't really want to share it because it's just my personal opinion and I can't back it up with scripture. But demons are not fallen angels. Fallen angels are something else. Iba sila. Sila yung principality, sila yung lumalaban sa angels. Ang angel kasi may body. So they don't need to inhabit people. You know? Ang demons kailangan ng body. They would rather be in pigs than not have a body. You know? So, uh, as you would see dun sa story in the Legion. So, there is a hierarchy. Um, there are what you call, itong principalities, ito yung tinatawag na territorial spirits. Okay? So spirits with territories, your reference verse for that would be Daniel chapter 9 and Daniel chapter 10. That there's a spirit prince of Persia, the spirit prince of Greece. May mga kanya-kanya silang territory. Um, demons don't really follow geography. They follow people. They don't need land. They don't need real estate. You know, their real estate is people. So uh, kaya spirit prince of this, spirit prince of that. How do you deal with that? Do you warfare prayers? The principalities? Do you cast them out? Do you do this? Actually, no. Wala tayong biblical reference for picking fights with territorial spirits. Okay? Um, wala tayong, the way you deal with territorial spirits, you will see that in Luke chapter 10. You know? And um, uh, I know medyo ano nanto, connected lang, but I, I just want to share this very quickly. You know, I've, I've heard people kasi na Hindi, labanan natin. Mag-fasting tayo, mag-intercede tayo para bumagsak yung, yung spiritual principality ng ganito, ganyan na area. You know, that, that doesn't really work. Uh, you know, <laughs> it doesn't work. 
nagpapagod ka lang and you may be picking a fight that you know you shouldn't be fighting the way you deal with the principalities is you share the gospel and manifest the kingdom on earth as it is in heaven luke chapter 10 jesus sent out his 70 or 72 disciples two by two to go preach the gospel heal the sick cast out demons raise the dead do do all those things he gave them authority over all the power of the enemy and then they came back after ministering the truth and manifesting the kingdom and then jesus said i saw satan fall like lightning diba hindi naman niya sinabi oh magintercede kayo para malaglag si satan ah. no 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 satan fell off his seat because that area was transformed by the gospel You want to fight off these spirits? You want to fight off these demons and do this and do that and destroy the grip of the enemy on the place? Share the gospel. Manifest God's love. Manifest the kingdom. Hindi mo kailangan i-warfare yung mga principalities or territorial spirits or whatever. Just preach the gospel. Give them the true gospel. Tell them what salvation really is. Tell them what sozo is. Tell them what soteria really is. Tell them what Jesus did on the cross. Manifest that love. Do the same works that Jesus did. Love like Jesus. Love with the love of God. And when you do that, you know, malalaglag sa upuan niyo kung sinong principality yan. Satan mismo, same plan. You saw him fall like, uh, like, like lightning, di ba? So, you know, so I, I hope that answers that question. Um, can, I, can I add something because you're already in that chapter? Go. Uh, Matthew, Matthew 7, 21, kung tinuloy mo pa yon. not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Sino yung nire-refer niya when, when he said that? On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? So, pati yung, pati yun, yung, yung mga false teachers, prophets, and whatnot, they still use Jesus. They still use the, the authority of his name to what? And cast out demons in your name and do many mighty works in your name. Ganun katindi yung ano nun. So, Whether they were doing it as a con, whether or not um, deliverance or healing actually took place, it they still use Jesus' name. So yeah, it's one in the good. Super good point, bro. You know, and I want you guys to remember that. Di porke na ka prophesy ka, di porke may gift ka, or kaya mo mag deliverance, or kaya mo mag whatever work na miracles. That doesn't mean na tama ka na. That doesn't mean that you're mature. You know, God looks at the heart. First Samuel 16:7. Men, men look at the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. Oh, God knows your heart. Pero staklap dun is not everyone who says Lord, Lord will enter the kingdom of heaven. Then when they say Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? Lord, did we not cast out demons in your name? So niya, get away from me! I never knew you. Ang hapdi nun, kasi never. Ibig sabihin nun, umpisa pa lang maliga na kahit anong successful ng ministry mo. Na, na dami mo nang na-prophesy, dami mong ganito, dami mong cast out the demons. Only God, only you and God know your heart. Kaya ito yun eh. Ang focus mo natin, si Jesus, or ang focus lang natin, power. Kasi pansin ko, ang daming ministry, pag-focus giftings, hindi na si Jesus yung focus eh. Para, okay, ang Jesus, yeah, yeah. pero hindi, anong ano mo? Ano yung dream mo? Ano yung ano mo? Nakita mo, ano nakita mo sa ganito? Grabe, nakita ko yung angel na ganito. Parang, mas excited pa sila sa angel kaysa kay Jesus kaysa sa word of God. You know, so it's kind of sad. Just be careful. Be careful with that stuff. You know, be careful with lusting after power and recognition and not really focusing on the word of God. So, good point, Brother Nick. For, ano, okay. Um, okay, wait now. Ano po difference ng casting out sa uh, rebuking? Well, again, they use two different words. Or this, yung, yung pag-rebuke mo, if you want to get technical about it, you rebuke, basically, you enforce God's will, upon, you enforce the authority of Christ and God's will upon the enemy. Then you rebuke them. Na parang, um, parang sinita mo, parang binangga mo siya, kinontra mo siya. Pag kinast out mo siya, uh, you kinast out mo siya, pinapaalis mo na siya sa press. You know, pinapalis mo na siya. So, I mean, either way, you know, the Lord, it's not about, uy, di ko na-rebuke, patay, kailangan kastan, and hindi ganun. So, don't don't worry too much about that. God knows your heart. It's not about tama or ano ba lahat ng nirecite mo. It's more on, enforce mo ba talaga yung authority ni Christ, you know? So, okay. Sister Marta asking, paano brother on sa dreams? If meron ka attack and we cast it out, even if na-cast out na, if you have uh, dreams, Okay, if you have uh, dreams that 
bother you or torment you, um, first and foremost, I always say, you know what, check what media you've been consuming. Have you been watching too much Netflix? Have you been watching too much this and that? Because you feed your mind with that stuff. Remember, yung Second Corinthians 10.5, take every thought captive and bring it to the obedience of Christ. So, you know, I've had people come to me, and brother, you're a big torment. I say, how is it? It's a horror pala yung pinapanood mo. Diba? So, um, so, that's the first thing I would ask. But at the same time, if it persists, or if that's something, I would pray to the Holy Spirit and ask, uh, ask, the, ask the Holy Spirit, I mean, uh, Lord, reveal mo naman sa akin, ano ba root nito? And then I would just speak blessing over my imagination in Jesus' name. I bless my mind. I declare that I have the mind of Christ, 1 Corinthians 2.16. In Jesus' name, and that there are no uh, nightmares or evil dreams or evil thoughts welcome in this mind, because I am blessed and I am filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, thank you, Jesus. Diba? So, gonna lang, you know. So, just bless your imagination, bless your night's sleep, bless, forbid the enemy from tampering with your thoughts, and uh, yeah, you know, you don't really cast it out unless you're really positive that it is a spirit who is tormenting you. Then you come against the pag na reveal ni Holy Spirit yon. Then you bind, you you know, cancel whatever legal right they have renounced or cast out, or as the spirit leads. Um, question from Sister Cat. Okay, Sister Cat, uh, where do they go when you cast them out? Oh, this is a very good question. Okay, so um, normally, normally people would say that na uh, cast out sila. Ang, ang pinaka reference mo lang is into the abyss, de ba? Pero you see. Um, hindi mo na problema kung saan sila punta basta paalisin mo sila kasi sa Matthew 12 kita mo na meron silang dry places di ba? meron silang dry places meron silang uh, actually yung iba lilipat sa ibang tao may, may time yan na ano uh, ito another testimony sa Cavite naman to na yung demon uh, talagang nakangausap demon was answering back so huwag mo ako paalisin ayoko na bumula ayoko na ano ayoko mawala dito ayoko mawala so I go, shut up, just keep quiet. I, I command you to be silent, Jesus' name. Get out. Pwede ba ako lumipat sa kapatid? So I go, no, I forbid you in Jesus' name. Get out, no negotiation. Pwede ba ako lumipat sa nanay? No, talagang, as in, ganun. Pwede ba ako lumipat sa pinsan? Sa pinsan na lang, sa pinsan na ako lumipat. You know, ang dami. Hanggang nung huli, sa langgam, sa langgam. Pwede ba ako lumipat sa langgam? <laughs> so, you know? And I was like, I don't have to negotiate with demons. Just get out in Jesus' name. You know? So I mean, that's just the personal... Buti na lang hindi siya humirit ng pwedeng lumipat sa ipis ko, hindi yari ako na. <laughs> <laughs> oh, kasi ano, pa- Pastor Manny was with me that night when I was dealing with that. Nagpapaalam sa kapatid, sa pinsan, sa ganito. Nagpapaalam, bakit, bakit sa kapatid, bakit sa pinsan, bakit sa ganyan. So, um, what I discerned is that that spirit came through a generational curse or generational sin na may witchcraft sa family and it was true. Nag-dedicate nga ng bloodline sa mga demon gods or whatever. So, you know, may open door. Kaya pwede lumipat doon. So, yung akin, you know, um, walang formula yung deliverance, guys. Kahit sa Gospels, kahit sa, sa Acts, yung kay Paul, walang formula eh. Ang formula lang doon is name ni Jesus and that's it. You know? Pero yung iba, uy, pinayagan ni Jesus sa baboy. Why Jesus did that? I don't know. But hindi porke pumayag si Jesus, ikaw na papayagan mo. You know what I mean? A- a- ako personally, I don't have to tell them to go anywhere. You know, I just cast them out. I don't care where you go. Wherever you're going, it's not nice. You know, or, or napansin ko, another thing that I was led to declare before is I send you to the feet of Jesus. Yun, nung, nung may time na ginawa ko rin yun, grabe yung manifestation ng tao, uh, sumuka siya na parang cotton. It was really weird. Because we just ate, and this, this guy ate a lot of food. We ate pancit, and ganito, ganito, pero... When I when I said I command you to get out, spirit of witchcraft, and I command you, I send you to the feet of Jesus to be judged right now in the name of Jesus Christ. It was crazy, you know, and it was weird because I was expecting pancit to come out, but it was it wasn't. <laughs> so um, yeah, I don't know where they go. It doesn't matter but as long as you get them out and you forbid them to come back. That's good. Um, from Sister Ina. I remember that eh, sabi, declare ka na nang mag-draw ng bloodline para di ka mapasok demons. Halimbawa, may statue. Kasama mo, mag-draw lang daw bloodline. Uh, no. Anong gagawin ng bloodline? Pag ganun, magsindi ka na rin ng kandila at saka insenso. Di ba? At saka, uh, higaan mo yung mga Bible. Tsa, ano. You know, it's not, it's not the drawing of the bloodline or the declaring it. It's do you know what the blood has done. You know? 
So kahit na anong confess natin, if we don't understand or don't exercise the authority, you know, demons aren't afraid of just words. Demons are afraid of faith-filled words. So, hindi ko kailangan ng bloodline. You know why? Because I am the bloodline. You know, I am the bloodline. I'm the bloodline. Wherever I go, pag ako umapak dyan, tago kayo kasi bit-bit ko si Jesus Christ. You know? So, hindi, hindi sa mayabang tayo. Kasi wala naman akong pinagmamayabang na sarili ko. Ang ipagmamalaki ko, si Jesus Christ. What He has done, who I am. But, you know, so if it's, if it's, not, it's not about just drawing bloodlines or confessing the blood or whatever, it's, I know what it is. I know what Jesus has done for me. So, you know, ayan, dahil sabi ni Brother Nick, wala akong pakailang kung saan sila pumunta, basta lumayo sila. Tama, bro. Ay, <laughs> Sister Ina, um, nung i-deliverance ako, may binigay na form, may list na dapat sagutan. Then may pinapray sa akin. Uh, naisip ko parang Catholic Church din. Dapat pala, alam mo, yes, agree. Uh, dapat alam mo true identity. Okay, you know, here's the thing. Pag may form ka, the demons know that form too. They have their work around. There's no formula for it. And hindi porque sinulat mo sa form yung kasalanan mo or nag-confess ka, that doesn't mean automatically that you've repented from your heart. And it's the heart that matters. It's the heart. So, di ba, anhin mo yun. Kahit na anong confess ko, kahit na anong basahin ko, anyone can read those prayers. Anyone can renounce this and renounce that. But if you really mean it from your heart, yun, yun eh. That's when the grace of God flows. When He comes alive in your heart. I see your heart mo, that is the core of your being. Your heart is where your soul and your spirit interface. You know that? Diba? Hebrews 4.12 dun. Diba? Yung, yung the word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. Diba? Discerning between what? Bone and marrow, soul and spirit, but discerning the thoughts and intents of the heart. Your heart mo is where your soul and your spirit meet. So if you decide in your heart that I belong to Jesus and ayo ko na yung bandage ko, ayo ko na tong pinagdaan ko, iba yun. Again, another personal testimony. Guys, you know, I don't know, most of you would know that I, I struggled with alcoholism, I struggled with lust, I struggled with drug abuse, I struggled with violence and, and, and all of this crazy stuff and torment. And, and depression and all that. Guys, yung deliverance ko was instant. Wala nag-pray over sa akin. I quit drugs. I quit smoking. I quit alcohol. I quit I quit um, everything in one night. Nilukod ko kay God. Sabi ko, Lord, ayoko na. Wala nag-cast out sa akin. Wala nag-ano do. I quit right then and there. And I could have never done that on my own. Si God lang talaga. Pastor Macho, same. Drugs, alcohol, sugar, lahat. One night, isang luhod lang. Hindi pa nga kami magkasama nun eh. Hindi pa, siya, hindi pa siya kasama sa... As in, wala pa. Hindi pa kami nagkikita ni Mahatso nun. You know, niluhod niya kay God. Pero the next day, he was free from all the bondage, all the all the, the addictions, all the everything. Y- yun ang deliverance na ano. Kasi si Jesus na mismo yung nakapasok sa puso. So, I mean, that's available. It's not the endless casting out and renouncing and... Masulat mo lahat ng kasalanan mo kasi you know what? Never mo masusulat lahat ng kasalanan. Di ba? Okay. From Brother Alex, sabi niya, there was one when Jesus uh, answered his apostle, this one needs fasting. Uh, fasting. Ah, this one doesn't come out but by prayer and fasting. Actually, you know, just to, just to, just to share with you, I agree that fasting is valuable. I do have a, I do have a very good teaching on fasting. Um, but you know, the word fasting is actually not included in the original text. In the, this one, yung sa, ano yun eh, yung sa, sa bata na throws him into the fire, throws him into the water. Why could we not cast him out? This one comes out but only through, uh, through prayer and fasting. Yung fasting wala sa original na language. You know, but um, I don't think it's wrong. Uh, even if it really was in the original language, uh, fasting is a way to weaken your flesh so that your spirit will be stronger. You know, so important rin yung fasting. Fasting is not a work that you do para humina demons. Fasting is a work, it is, not, it is not a work. Fasting is something you do to get your flesh out of the way so that your spirit is louder. So that your spirit, you can hear him louder and that you're more sensitive to him. So actually magandang, sobrang gandang practice ng uh, fasting. All right. Um, from Sister Trisha. Said, can we cast out the enemy? Kaya hindi sila kaharap. Uh, I mean, 
you can declare I've done something like that before. But again, as the spirit leads, um, kung gagawin lang siya regularly, it's not really effective. Because again, it's the truth that um, that sets us free. But at the same time, uh, my time na I ministered through prayer deliverance over someone who was in a different country, different time zone. So kahit online lang yun, declare mo. Yung importante dun, yung grace ni God yun dyan. Diba? Yung grace ni God yung gumagana. So, um, kahit di mo kaharap, I think hindi sa physical yung important. It's more on receptive, receptive ba yung heart ng tao na pinagpe-pray mo. Sister Cha, Mark 11, 22, 23, speak to your mountain, be taken up through, amen. Ayoko na mag... <laughs> amen, tama. So just speak to your mountain, exercise that authority. Pero, tandaan mo sa Mark 11, if you, if you say to this mountain and do not doubt, importante yun. Kasi madali mag-declare. Ang tanong doon, naniniwala ba tayo sa declare natin? Or, are we just declaring something na, eh, sabi sa amin nung leader namin, ito yung i-declare. So we gotta be careful and make sure now we're not doing things just for the sake of doing things. We're doing things and declaring things that we actually believe. Like yung mga tinatanong kanina, yung bloodline, blood of Jesus, ang dali mag-confess yan kahit Muslim, kahit parot, tuluan mo, turuan mo mag-blood of Jesus. Eh. You know, minor bird, sige, blood of Jesus, man. Pero hindi yun yung point. Yung point is, naniniwala ba tayo? Do we understand that? Can we really appropriate what Jesus has done on the cross for us. So you speak to your mountain, that'll work. If you really believe that Jesus said this, and I'm, sabi ni Lord, so mangyayari you know, so I agree, I agree. Uh, I got a message na, can we only cast out demons, those who are willing to be delivered, or they kahit di sila present personally? Um, ako, sa totoo lang, yung, yung, totoo lang, ha, I would not minister deliverance or even tamper with casting out spirits, kung hindi willing yung person. Actually, hindi lang willing to go, willing to repent. I'm, I'm gonna do you more harm than good by getting those spirits out forcibly or ay, sige yan, tigas ng ulo ng asawa nun. Tara, di ka dito. Cast out natin. Uh, it's not gonna be good. Actually, feeling ko, di rin naman aalis yung demon kasi may legal rights sila. Diba? May, may isa, may isang ganyan eh. May isa kaming ganyan na, na deal with. Not me personally. You know, but uh, parang a relative of one of our members before, sinama niya. Ito, grabe. Sobrang, sobrang demonic talaga. Nagsusulat siya ng pen, ng ball pen. Tapos pag binatawan niya yung ball pen, nagsusulat pa rin yung ball pen. Yeah, so I, I kid you not. That's really, talaga demonic talaga. And um, very talented yung bata. Ang galing mag-drawing. Yung mag-drawing siya, parang mukhang, mukhang 3D comics na naewan na sobrang galing. Tapos nung pinagpapray, parang ayaw niya paalis yung demon. Kasi yung tanong niya is, Pag kinast out ba, mawawala din itong talent. Pag wala tayong magagawa dyan kung yun yung gusto mo. <laughs> uh, bless na lang kita. We bless you in Jesus' name. I pray for a divine encounter for you. And uh, I pray that you come to know the Lord intimately. But I'm not gonna be casting out demons kasi ayaw niya eh. You know? Pilitin kong umalis, it will obey. It will obey kasi bit-bit ko yung authority ni Jesus. Bit-bit ko yung word of God. Bit-bit ko si Holy Spirit. Bit-bit ko name ni Jesus. It will obey, but when it comes back, what's going to happen to that? So don't make deliverance your first resort. You, 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 may term yun na, when in doubt, cast out. Sobrang mali nun. Sobrang faithless statement nun. When in doubt, go seek the Lord. Para hindi ka na in doubt. When in doubt, go seek the Holy Spirit. Go claim the mind of Christ and seek the word so that you're not in doubt. You're not supposed to be in doubt. If you're in doubt and you cast out, that is faithless. You know? Nanguhula ka lang. And they know that you're guessing. So be careful. Um, uh, anyway, you know, yung akin, when I minister to people, I I share the gospel with everyone. But I invest myself and my time and my life up in people who are really willing to receive. Kung hindi willing to receive, kung naghahanap lang ng argument, o oh, yung mga ito, oh, anak ko, tigas ng ulo, cast out mo yan, deliverance mo. Hindi ko na, uh, hindi ko na ano yan. Kasi hindi naman willing eh. But I'll, I'll say, hey, I'm not going to go for deliverance, but I want to have coffee with you. you know, I want to minister to you. I want to talk to you about God's love. You know, feeling lang ng iba boring eh. Pero effective guys eh. You know, I, I've seen the fruit of the truth. I mean, just look at the people that we've been ministering to, how the, the, their lives have transformed. I don't have to 
ask people to step up and oh, mag-testimony ka. Mag-te- hindi ko kailangan sabihin yun kasi kahit saan sila pumunta, testimony sila. You know, papansin mo sa metanoia, we don't ask people to give testimony. We don't need to. Because people themselves, when they walk around, they are the testimonies. I don't have to ask people to step up. I- I'm not against asking for testimonies, by the way. I'm just saying na ganun katindi yung effect ng power ng truth. In freedom, you can see it in their face. You can see it in their hearts, in their lives. And, you know, some of you guys in this group were part of that workshop last weekend. And, you know, I praise God for the testimonies you have. Pati yung ngiti, iba na yung iba nga, mas, mas guwapo na, mas maganda eh. Alam mo yun? Tapos hindi naman, pre-nay over, yung truth lang talaga yung dala. So, nakakatuwa. Um, okay, Dennard's asking, Bro, can you do the work? Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, actually, I thought you answered that. Uh, so, yeah, you you could answer that question. I, I just had something in relation to that. Uh, can you do deliverance even if there's some unbelief and doubt in you? Well, you know, yung akin, again, sabi ko nga kanina, it's not about, uh, hindi mo kailangan perfect eh. You know, hindi naman ma-perfect ka. Yung sa 1 Timothy 4 ba yun, 2 Timothy, yung even when we are faithless, he is faithful for he cannot deny himself. Uh, 2 Timothy 4, 8, or somewhere there. I'll check later. But, um, yung point ni God is hindi niya hinahanap yung perfect ka. Hinahanap niya, uh, you don't have to be perfect to execute that thing. Grace ni God yung gumagana dito. It's mas importante kay God mas set free yung anak niya kaysa, uy, tama to, ganito. Pag may doubt ka, I believe gagana pa rin naman kasi love ni God yun. Pero at the same time, ayaw ka rin mag You know what I mean? Parang, I'd rather be on the faith side rather than, uy, pwede naman pala doubt. You know, so, I'd rather build up my faith pero during those times na, Lord, I, ah, eto may testimony din on. Pero may times na, Lord, alam nyo naman heart ko. Medyo kabahado ako dito. But you are a good God. And I will not understand, underestimate your grace. So I speak healing over this person. I speak freedom over this person. My time in, guys, I was in, um, I was in Davao probably mga three years ago. Too. Tapos I was invited to preach in this church. And then, um, so the altar call, I was praying, Gabi, guys, yung dinala sa akin na bata. He was mga four or five years old. You know, yung ulo niya, it was, it was as big as a basketball, and it looked like a watermelon that was dropped on the floor. My goodness, I've never seen a head so deformed in my life. It was like a huge watermelon that was somebody smashed with a huge hammer, like a huge mallet. May mata, pero walang eyelid. Nakabukas lang. Tapos katabi ng mata, ngipin. Tapos yung tenga, tapos yung ilong magkatabi. Pero wala talagang tenga. Tapos may buhok ng konti, tapos yung kita. Parang, grabe. You know, it's like Mr. Potato Head got run over by a car. And I was like, what happened to this child? So nung nakita ko yun, binulungan ako ng demonyo. O oh, ano, kaya mo mag-pray ng healing. Grabe yun. Binulungan ako ng demonyo, you know, from the outside. Which is, ano, kaya mo pa mag-pray ng healing. Kaya mo mag-pray, kaya mo maniwala na kayo si God yan. Kita mo nga, sobrang deformed. And there's so many people watching. And sabi ko, you know, so I took a step back. And I was just praying in tongues and I was talking to the Lord. And, you know, I was like, Lord, I don't have the faith to, you know, to, I don't know what to do. You know, I don't know. I don't got going to go. I don't got Pero one thing na alam ko, Lord, decide ko, sobrang good mo pa rin. Sobrang love mo to. Love mo tong bata to. This is not your will. And you know what? Kahit mapahiya ako dito or whatever, I don't care. I'm going to speak your word. So I just command healing over the kid. Oh, wala nangyari. Pero, you know, I mean, I stepped out in faith, man. I stepped out. Kahit na sabi mo, my doubt or whatever, you you overcome that. Yung point dyan, yung point ko lang in sharing that is, ang tinitignan ni God yung, yung heart mo. Kaya mo ba siya ng paniwala? I'd rather be on the side of faith than doubt, but at the same time, don't let doubt condemn you. You know, kung may time na medyo, Lord, Jordan, medyo double-minded ako dun ah, or medyo nag-waver ako dun, no, don't let that condemn you. Go back into the Word and say, Lord, ayoko na maulit yun. I'm gonna go to your Word. I want your Word to come alive in my heart even more than ever before. So that, that doesn't happen to me. I'm not condemned, but I'm inspired to know you and seek you deeper. So, you know, I uh, hope that from Sister Trisha, it says, can speaking in tongues cast out the enemy? Um, 
I think it'll help reveal things. It'll help intercede. You know, Romans 8, 26, 27, when you no longer know what to say, you pray in tongues. Kasi minsan, kunyari may lalapit sa'yo, papakast out, papadeliverance or whatever, pero nagtatago na sikreto. Or sometimes you're just stumped and parang wala kang leading, wala kang marinig. They just pray in tongues. You know, the Holy Spirit will intercede. Um for the person and for you about what's going on. So I'm not sure if it can really cast out just by tongues, but more on personal experience. Ko. I will pray in tongues. I will, well, I don't know like manifest sa harap ko, tapos di ko kilala. I don't know the name. I don't know anything about the person. Um, ayan, another testimony. Sa yung dating fish gate, uh, may sumama dun. Sina, sinamahan niya yung friend niya na magpapapray ng deliverance ganun. but as they were praying for his friend siya mismo yung nag-manifest so I didn't know this guy's name I didn't know where he was from I didn't know anything about him but here's this guy convulsing in front of me violently so I went in blind so I had no idea kung ano then I started praying in tongues kasi hindi ko na alam sa sabihin ko I don't know I don't even know his name Hindi ko, nga, hindi ko siya ma-lift up kay Lord na pangalan niya. I just, I just say, my brother, my brother, in Jesus' name, I lift him up. I prayed in tongues and after a while, sabi ko, um, na-realize ko na, na lumabas isa-isa yung mga sin, na may, may, sin, may, may homosexuality pala. Meron palang uh, lust, meron palang addiction. Meron, doon lumabas yung Holy Spirit. Kasi ang dami kong nakita sa kanya na na-cast out. Um, all because as I was praying in tongues, I was able to somehow, you know, receive interpretation for it, you know, in my heart. Uh, pray in tongues, bilang false holy spirit. Okay, I cast out false holy spirit in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I command you to get up. Sigaw siya. Nahinginig. And he was, he was on his elbows and knees, just shaking. And grabe yun. So, yeah, pero hindi nagbago yung guy. So, wala rin kwenta. <laughs> anyway. Um, sorry. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Next. And brother Dench or sister Sarah, addiction is bondage, right? Is it always addressed by deliverance? Uh, there is a spirit of addiction. Pero hindi yung spirit yung problema mo. Yung problema mo is paano nakapasok doon. So ano yung root? Madali mag-cast out. Spirit of addiction. Get out in Jesus' name. Yeah. Bakit siya addicted? Ano yung satisfaction na hinahanap niya? So we don't just cast out the spirit. Kaya nga yung deliverance, medyo surface level yan. Let's go down because the, the truth addresses the root. Ano yung lie na tinanggap ng tao kaya siya naging addictive? Diba? So ano yun? Yung lie dun is yung satisfaction mo dito mo makukuha, hindi kay Christ. Yung lie dun is you need this to be happy instead of finding your joy in the Lord. You know, so hanapin mo kung ano yung lie. It's always truth versus lie. Tandaan mo, ang demonyo, binabahayan yan, lie or sin. Diba? So, yun, yun yung ano niya. So, yung spirit of addiction, yes, you can cast it out. It is a spirit, but you would need to address the root. Kung hindi babalik. I'll, 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 I'll add something to the, to the addiction part. Because uh, you know that I constantly like tease and taunt Kat on, on a lot of things. So, yung sinasabi ko sa kanya na parang, oh, parang pareho rin yung sa akin that I, I can like... Uh, uh, I didn't really do deliverance, deliverance, uh, bondage-wise and dami. But but my my biggest struggle was uh, gaming addiction. As in sobra, as in tatlong beses kami munti ka maghiwalay ni Kat dahil lang sa gaming. Kasi sobrang lala talaga. And I spent like a huge chunk of money na ayoko munang i-mention kung magkano yung ginasas ko sa virtual items lang. Ganun ka lala. But it wasn't deliverance. It wasn't even during that time na, oh, uh, nagkaroon na ng revelation from the Holy Spirit. It was just replacing it with something better. It was like, ano yung kuto? Parang, bleh, nawala lang. Parang it just, it just died. Because something so great replaced it. You need, you need to get that. It's like what, what uh, Ron was saying, that may mga ibang tao, that they would go like, oh, deliverance, deliverance. Uh, papa-deliverance ako. And then gulat sila, ang ginawa mo lang na ipagkwentuhan ka lang nung time na yon. The why part is the, you want them or we want you guys to understand our topic uh, uh, last week, which was the believer's authority or authority of the believer and yung mga topics natin before, identity in Christ. Once you have that and really 
Kino, know who you are. Uh, there was a question. Sorry, I sing it ko lang to. Really quick. Uh, yeah, I have that already. Uh, the difference between rebuking and casting it out. Or how to word these things. Pag naintindihan mo yung authority mo and your identity mo. And, and I use, last week, I used my example as the boss of the company. Diba? It doesn't matter whether I say, you're fired, or wag ka nang pumasok, or umuwi ka na, mag-empake ka ng ano mo, ayoko makita yung, yung mukha mo. I, you know, I can say it with a smile, but I know my authority that once I say that, that thing takes place. That employee says bye-bye. If I wanted someone suspended, it's the same thing. I just basically tell HR or I tell them myself, you're suspended. Don't come in for work for three days. And that thing will take place. In the spiritual realm, it's pretty much the same way. Diba? Kung, kung picture this, picture your employee na napakatigas ng ulo. Tapos, ikaw rin yung nagpapapasok sa kanya the next day. And then, ikaw rin, sasakyan mo rin din siya. It's, it's like that. But once you know that you're not supposed to be here, it's pointless for you to even negotiate with the thief. I use that as an example. Pag bigla kang pinasok ng magnanakaw, makikiusap ka ba ta sa sabi mo, kuya, bahay ko po to, anong ginagawa niyo dito? And then the thief goes, no, 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 bahay ko to eh. And what do you do? Do you go to your, to your closet and look for the title and then say, hindi, kuya, wala, wala yung ano eh. My name's here. Wala, wala dito yung pangalan ninyo. It, that doesn't take place. You try to drive out the, 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 the thief, the demon right away. So anyway, there. Also, I uh, just want to add like in relation to, you know, like I guess every woman here, especially with our topic right now, but before we start casting out or rebuking people or, you know, demons, I mean, not people, but uh, we should have uh, a knowledge also of like doing self-deliverance. But like when we, before you cast out, you know, evil spirits or, you know, start uh, engaging the enemy. Like, what's what's the uh, proper way to do it, bro, bro? Like, uh, you know, like in terms of, uh, like, in, in relation to everyone here. Like, before engaging the enemy or before, you know, it should start with us first. Eh? But like, Dude, how, how do we, yeah, how do we do that? No, the, we got to be careful with that because sometimes this becomes another religious work. Na, kunyari, o sige, pray na tayo, teka, mag-claim muna akong armor of God, tapos ka-cover ko muna blood ni Jesus. Parang, alam mo, hindi, hindi ganun yun eh. Totoo lang, the, the only way you can really prepare to minister is, paniwalaan mo yung truth. Kailangan check mo heart mo, totoo ba itong binibigay kong love ko ni Jesus? Totoo ba itong binibigay kong freedom? Check ko heart ko. Anong motivation ko? Diba? Ano motivation ko? Bakit ako mag-minister ng deliverance? Diba? Is it something... I mean, check your heart. Ask yourself that question. Why do you do what you do? You know, why am I going to pray deliverance over this person? Why am I going to cast out this demon? Gusto ko bang magpasikat na may power na ganito? Or am I really genuinely expressing God's love for this person? Na hindi ko matiis makita ang isang child of God na suffering bondage kasi alam ko may sagot na. You know, so again... Yung, yung akin, mas importante mag-minister ng truth. And before you minister the truth, kailangan totoo rin sa'yo yung pinaniniwalaan mo. You know, we don't just regurgitate information. We don't just regurgitate prayers and declarations. The best way to prepare yourself to minister deliverance or whatever, healing, is to really believe and have a revelation of what God's Word says about it. You know, na totoo ang totoo sa'yo. Pero again, don't be afraid. Kasi may grace si God. But at least... Get to that place of faith na kaya mong assure sarili mo sa heart mo na hindi, binigay ko talaga lahat kay God. Wala akong pwedeng ipagmalak. Si Jesus lang. All I have is Christ. And I'm gonna manifest His love wherever I go. I may not be perfect. I may not know everything. I may not be the smartest guy here. But you know what? I believe God's word. And that's all I enforce. And with that, I believe you'll be, you'll be more than prepared to face whatever. Diba? So, um, yun. Balik ako yung ibang questions, ha? My sister, may, may, may question kay Sister Abigail. Oh, hello, sister. Sabi niya, what spirits uh, reside inside religious statues? 
Um, I believe, okay. So, wala kasing kwentang tumira sila sa religious statues kasi wala naman body yun eh. You know what I mean? Walang life dun. Wala silang pwedeng sirain. But I do believe that they uh, they curse certain items and uh, religious statues are basically a doorway or an invitation. Actually, ito yun eh. Hindi yung statue itself. It's the heart condition of the person who welcomes the statue. Kasi statue, what is a statue? It's wood or it's stone or it's cement or whatever clay or whatever the world it is. It doesn't matter what it is. Sunugin ko yun. Wala na yun. Alam mo yun? Actually, sa Corinthians, sinasabi ng Paul, ni, ni Paul, I think 2 Corinthians 14 ba, yung about the conscience na um, ano ba yung statue? Di ba wood lang yun? Well, wala yun eh. Kahit na mag-offer ka ng food dyan, wala namang kwenta yan. But it's a matter of conscience. Um, regarding evil spirits residing in statues, I don't believe they reside in statues. I believe that the heart condition of the person who likes or welcomes the statues, yun yung, yun yung problema. Yung taong naglalagay ng statue, yung taong may gusto ng, ng idol, yun ang open door. Hindi yung mismong physical object. But I believe they can curse the object, pero dali lang yun eh. It's more on yung tao yung problema. Diba? Okay. Um, ito ang mga nagagandahan ko mga sisters dahil sa joy and peace. Praise God sa inyo. Uh, Sister Martha, what about the house cleansing? Are we supposed to do this every day? No. No, kasi magiging religious work na naman siya. What if you miss a day? Wala na. Nawala na yung protection ni God. You know, ganun ba yun? So, it's more on walking in the power and authority. And if you do anything like house cleansing every day, the following day, actually, sasabihin ng demonyo, di naman naniniwala ito. Eh. Araw-araw nag-declare eh. You know what I mean? So, rather than doing something every day out of ritual or out of rote, you know, just invest in the word and really have a revelation of who you are in Christ. You know, dati kayan din ako, I used to bless the ganito, bless the ganyan. Tapos yung declare na victorious, then ganito. Pero na-realize ko, bakit ako defensive? Kayo yung umilag sa akin. Ako yung, may Christ in me eh. Colossians 1.27, Christ in you. This is the mystery. The Christ in you, the hope of glory. I got Jesus Christ in me. Kayo yung magtago sa akin. Kayo yung lumayas. Where I step, that's holy ground. Not because of me, but because of Christ in me. Where I step, that's where the kingdom is. That's where the blood of Jesus goes. That's where the power of the Holy Spirit is. So, you know, if you get to that place of faith where you can actually believe uh, God's word about who you are and what authority you have in Christ, you don't have to, you know, do the house cleansing every day and this and that. You know, may mga nag invite sa akin mag house cleansing or mag house blessing. And, you know, sometimes I agree. If I have time, I'll agree. Kasi I want to minister to the people there and tell them that um, actually, di mo kailangan na house cleansing Kailangan mo tayuan yung truth ng word ni God. You know, what you have in Christ. So, um, yun. Ano po ba? Um, says, Bro Ron, pwede po ba mag-rebuke ng mga sinasabi ng pastor pag nasa church? Nag-desisyon sana ako di na mag-church kasi para mabigat talaga sa loob ko. Ibang teaching. Pero may nagsabi sa akin, gagamitin daw kaawa yun na hindi ako mag-church. You know what? Uh, here's the thing. We are the church. Where two or three are gathered, that's a church. It's not an institution. So, san tayo loyal? Sa institution o sa church? O sa word ni God? Pili tayo. Diba? Are we called to be members of an institution? Or are we called to be, you know, to walk in spirit and truth? Are we called to receive Christ? Diba? Pag umalis ba ako ng church, di na ako Christian. Diba? Paano kung, kung ano-anong pinagtuturo ng simbahan eh? nadi-disturb na yung Holy Spirit ko, tutuloy ko pa rin for the sake na member ako ng gano'n. Diba? So, again, it's it's a matter of personal conviction. But if you're in a place that does not speak truth and your spirit and your heart is disturbed, go find a place of faith. Go find a community of believers. Kung ano, um, you know, kasi ang hirap eh. I have a teaching on that, yung, yung power of agreement. So, ang hirap talaga. Hindi ang hirap to be in a place that disagrees with you or persecutes you or whatever. Pero it's a decision between you and God. You know, and if you really seek, God will plug you into a community of believers. You know, case in point, the ministry that he has brought up uh, right now, 
Now we have a community of believers. Madaming umalis ng church, madami na sakta ng simbahan, pero may spiritual family. And we don't just meet once a week. You know what I mean? It's a, it's it's more than that. It's a lifestyle. You know, some some people even in this group have grown so much in one year than the past 30 or 40 years they've ever been Christians. You know, there are some people in this group have grown so much more in the past five months than the past 20 years of being a Christian or whatever. Diba? So it's not na hindi yung loyalty natin kay Christ, hindi sa institution. So saan ka dinadala ni Jesus? San ba yung truth ng word ni God? Doon ka, saan ka mag-grow? Kung nandun ka lang for the sake of pakisama or sama ng loob or whatever, but then you're there for the wrong reasons. Diba? So again, pray about it more. Spend time, you know, um, spend time in the Word. Spend time talking to the Lord and, you know, intently listening to His voice. Sa bahala mag-lead sa'yo. Huwag kang umalis dahil may nagsabi sa'yo. Huwag kang umalis dahil na-offend ka. You know? Kung if you're gonna if you're gonna leave, it's because the Holy Spirit told you to go elsewhere. And He will plug you in. You will find a spiritual family that will welcome you, as is many of the people in this group. That uh, okay, from Brother Alex said, sometimes the enemy will laugh at those delivering and identify the sins they've committed. Does this happen? Yes, it does, brother. May ganyan, may ganyan na kwento. Ano? Uh, yung dati kong mentor, meron silang pinag-pray. Tapos nandun yung isang pastor, may kinakast out siyang spirit. Tapos sabi nung evil spirit dun sa pastor, sabi niya, ano, true story to, ha? sabi niya, cast out, cast out, ikaw nga, huling tithe mo, 1973. Lalo siya, <laughs> tahimik yung pastor. Tapos hindi siya, sira yung buong diskarte niya. Hindi, mahirap yung buhay talaga, naghirap kami nung ma, wala eh, you know what I mean? So, um, okay, my explanation for that is yung spirit na in-encounter dun, communicated with the spirit following that guy. So, na-reveal yung mga deep dark whatever niya. You know, kung magpapakondem ka dun, iyari ka, malaki yung problem. May ganun, may ganun. Um, I also encountered um, someone, so sadly, it's a friend. Sabi niya, pare, kaya nga ayaw ko mag-deliverance kasi baka mamaya sabihin yung mga kasalan ko. Sabi ko, kung may fear ka, kung ano yung sin mo, hindi mo naintindihan kung anong ginawa ni blood, ng blood ni Jesus. You know? You don't understand what happened on the cross. That means you are not free from your sin. That means you are eaten by guilt from your former sin. You know, if someone were to confront me, like, oh, brother, no, dati kang adik, dati kang babayero. O tapos, oh, totoo. Well, that's done, man. That's been nailed on the cross. That old me is dead and done. So, ano gusto mong gawin? Sige. There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. You know, I'm not hiding any of my sins. I did what I did, but I, man, I live, I'm a new creation now. Diba? So, yung akin lang, kung may condemnation ka sa heart mo or di mo naiintindihan yung cross, pag pinakailaman mo yung mga demonyo, oh, they're gonna throw some nasty stones at you. So again, let's go back to, you know, really understanding the cross, understanding who Christ is and understanding what we have in Christ. Diba? So, um, from Sister Candice, some thought the, progr- the process should be, go this way, confess, repent, rebuke. Okay, so confess, repent, rebuke. Uh, so, yung akin na lang, uh, gumagana ba? Diba? Kung confess, repent, rebuke. Hindi, pwede, pwede ko sabihin, sige, mag-repent ka ngayon. But repentance is not just confessing. Repentance is a change of mind. It's a decision in your heart na ayoko na. Madaling magsabi, hindi, repent mo to, repent mo yan. Pero kung hindi mo na-deal yung heart issue, ano ka mag-repent? Diba? So, you know, I'll, I'll be honest. Some people have been medyo controversial yun about our, our ministry na may mga nag accuse na hindi daw kami na naniniwala sa repentance, which is wrong. The very name of our ministry is Metanoia. Metanoia means repentance. It's the word in the Bible for repentance. Meta change. Noia, mind. And of course, we believe in repentance. Pero yung akin lang, huwag natin i-confuse yung repentance sa confession. Magkaiba yung dalawang yun. Hindi po kasi sinabi ko, oh, I repent of this in Jesus' name. I repent, I, I repent, repent, repent of this in Jesus' name. That's not gonna matter if you don't believe in that with your heart. Yung repentance mo is an inward change. It's not just something you express. Yung sabi ko, ako, yung personal deliverance ko before. The reason why I was delivered from all that nasty stuff was because I decided in my heart, Lord, all in na ako sa'yo. I didn't have to declare that. I didn't have to 
say anything. That was a decision I made in my heart. So yung confess, repent, rebuke, nakakatakot yan kasi iikutin ka ng kalaban dyan. Sasabihin niya sa'yo, confess, repent, rebuke, sasabihin niya sa'yo, bubulungan ka, uy, di mo na confess to, ala, kaya papasok ka ng demonyo, tapos ito mangyayari. Kasi di mo na confess, ah, confess ako ngayon, confess, confess, confess. Teka, ano pa ba sin ko? Isipin natin kung anong sin. So, ang nangyayari ngayon sa taong ganun, sin conscious ka na. Hindi ka na Christ conscious. So you have lost your focus on the cross of Christ. Your focus now is on, anong sin yung ginawa ko? Itong sin, sin. Huwag kang sin conscious. Hindi mauubos yung sin mo kung sin conscious ka. You know, whatever you magnify gets bigger. So if you magnify your sin, you're going to see a sinner, you're going to be unworthy, you're going to feel unworthy, you're going to be condemned, and the enemy will exploit that. But if you focus on the cross of Christ, diba? Tapos pag may na-reveal siya na, uy, anak, medyo pride yung kumaano sa'yo. Lord, sorry. I'm sorry about that, Lord. Tama kayo. You know, I left it up to you. I, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spend more time in your word to deal with this heart issue. Thank you, Lord, for pointing it out. I live for you. Tapos. Diba? So, it's not about just confessing and doing stuff. It's really, totoo lang, guys, yung laban, nasa mind, dyan ka nasa heart. Talagang, kaya mo bang paniwalaan work dito? Talaga bang all out ka for Jesus? Kaya mo bang sabihin na nothing else in this world you know, can take his place. Is he really that precious? Do you know relationship niyo ba? Talagang totoo. Ikaw lang yung pwedeng, you know, ikaw lang yung pwedeng magsabi nyo. So no amount of formulas, no amount of whatever, hindi eh. Kaya ha mo talaga relationship niyo ba? So, you know, um, yun lang. You know, I, it's been a really fruitful discussion <laughs> here. And I think, you know, maybe later on, like probably in a couple of weeks or something, we could do a part two of this because there's just so much more to talk about, diba? So much more to talk about. So much, so many more questions to uncover. So many more experiences to share. You know, I I like talking about this, especially now, because iba na yung perspective ko sa truth. Dati kasi, dati kasi healing and deliverance parang dinagtag ko lang sa alam ko eh. Na, uy, power, uy, authority, cast out demons, teka. Baka ito sin mo, confess mo to. I used to, galing ako dun. Galing ako dun. Ba, guys, I found, I found a more excellent way. Na effortless. Na renewing of mind yung katapat. Na, na, na ngayon, naiintindihan ko yung, nakakandaman ko at nakikita ko yung heart ni God. Yung pagmamahal niya para sa anak mo. And really, what you need is the love of God. It's really the love of God. You know, it's your identity in Christ. It's really standing in the Word. And 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 it's all a uh, decision, decision sa puso yan kung anong gagawin ng tao din. So, um, yeah, I'm going to end there. And because I know it's also, it's almost uh, 9.30, medyo gabi na rin. Brother Nick, Brother Setra, you want to add anything? I'm good, I'm good. good. I'm good. It's part two. Yeah, We're going to go for part two. Go tayo ng part two. You know, and, and again, there's so much to teach on this, man. There's so many scriptures that you can use, so many passages. Ang gusto ko lang mag-focus talaga today is huwag tayo maging weird about deliverance. It's super normal. And when you do pray, when you do it, you don't have to make it seem spectacular. You don't have to make it seem super whatever. Uy, di pare, pang malalim to. Kami yung mga elite uh, soldiers ni God na ganun. No, man. Elite soldiers kasi paglalaro ka ng demonyo, pride yan. You know? So, you gotta, you gotta be careful. We manifest Christ. Wala tayong ibang bit-bit kundi si Jesus daw. You know? Tsaka yung love ni God. Tandaan mo, guys, it's always about love. Check nyo mga motivation nyo. Yung mga cast out nito, i-pray mo si ganyan. Check, check the thoughts and intents of your heart. Use the word, am I operating in love? Or is there something else? Kung may something else, okay, step back muna. Uh, sabi mo sa tao na, you know, uh, I'm not available right now, but you know, I'll get back to you soon, and I'll be praying for you from I'm not, I'm not, a, I'm not able to minister right now. You know, it's not bad to say no, or not, not bad to say, um, uh, hindi pa pwede sa ngayon, di ako pwede sa ngayon. It's not bad. You know why? Because you're not the savior. You're not the only one na pwede magano. Don't underestimate God's love. You know, pag ako, pag may leading ako na na hindi ako yung mag-minister or whatever or I know that it's not my battle I trust that God loves that person 
And the Lord is raising up someone for that person to minister to that person and set them free and share God's love with them. Means that hindi ikaw. You know, so be attentive to the voice of the Holy Spirit. To say, if not, you might be, you might be fighting so many battles unnecessarily. Na hindi mo naman kailangan. Pero bugbog ka. Kasi hindi mo laban mo. Okay, so well, I, I just wanted to add uh, just just one thing because like siguro in relation to what Brother Ron was talking about lahat naman tayo dumaan doon di ba merong mga experiences like I, I used to ask Ron like uh, you know what should I do just repent 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 <laughs> you know there was a time that alright like what's what's the you know like all of these things we learn and I guess as disciples that's what that's what we're supposed to do we're just we're we're, we're, we're here to learn more about the truth and as we progress in our walk with Jesus that you know like the moment you say that you already know it all that you know I already have this a formula that's the trap eh? and I guess we're constantly learning but like like what what Ron was talking about is that there's there's always a new revelation eh? like if if repenting right now is working for you then there's something more but like, like if that's setting you free, you know what? There's something more. There's something that's gonna just you're gonna get a a, a better revelation of freedom. But there, there's there's so much more. Like Ron's gonna share something. I don't know. Maybe a few months from now, that he's just gonna get another revelation about something. And where are we in our walk? It's not we're we're not there yet. Where 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 Ron is right now, but we have our own revelations to yeah, secure. Yeah. That's good, bro. Yeah, I don't want to I wanna I wanna out wanna... of that. Wag nyo habulin yung walk ng iba. You each and every one of you, you have your own pace. Don't don't compare yourself to other people. Don't compare yourself na ah dapat si ganito ganyan dapat by this time ito ako. No no no. You got your own walk with God. You have your own relationship with Him. If you want to compare yourself to anyone, compare yourself to who you were yesterday. And if you're one step closer to God today, then good. If you're one percent better than what, then good. Diba? So, what well, mo compare na? Oi, dapat dapat yung testimony ko ganito rin. Dapat yung mas lain dun, mga seventy-five naman. <laughs> hindi 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 ganon yung habol natin. Pasa ang focus na natin si Jesus. Alam mo guys, toto lang. Kung kung ako lang, ako personal ko lang. Ayoko tong ginagawa ko. I don't like being in front. I don't like being the the guy on the camera. I don't like the, uh, being the guy whose whose face is plastered all over the. I don't know why? Because everyone's gonna throw stones at me, man. <laughs> and I don't like that. I enjoy my privacy. Pero, ito yung mission sa akin ngayon. Sa akin love ni God, I can't contain it, man. That's gonna it's gonna overflow. Now, I love people with the love of Jesus. I love you guys with the love of Jesus. And you know, I, I want to share this because this is something that changed my life. It's changing many other lives of people around us. And you know what? If you stand on this same truth, so many lives around you will change as well. You know? So, nakakatuwa lang talaga yung love and peace and joy. And, um, you know, I'll, I'll share one more one more testimony. This is super recent. Siguro mga two weeks ago lang to. You know? And guys, you know, I've been, I've been, you know, I've been a Christian for some time, pero... Yung walking in victory and freedom, that's only been probably the past five years of my life, you know? So when I encountered the Holy Spirit, I've never been depressed since. I've been sad, but not depressed. I've I've had trouble come my way, but I've never been depressed. I've never had the anxiety or this and that. I've never, wala, talagang freedom. I don't, wala, hindi, hindi ako na heartbroken, hindi ako na ano. Talagang protected ni God yung, ni God yung heart ko. And I'm, I'm super thankful for that, you know. So, I mean, it's been magaan for me for the past five years. I've had so much love and peace and joy overflowing. But, you know, about two weeks ago, you know, um, you know, just through conversations and accountability, you know, with, uh, with uh, you know, dear brothers in Christ and even with my wife, you know, may na pinpoint akong issues ko na that are rooted from my childhood and my upbringing. And, um, you know, I mean, it's not, it's not, it's not a demon, it's not, I don't know. It's more on just certain mindsets na tinanggap ko as my normal, you know, na hindi pala. So, it turns out, you know, I, I had some rejection issues from when I was younger. And we're just talking about it and processing it. 
And then, you know, nung nailabas ko, nung na-deal ko na, ah, oh, nga, no? So, kaya pala ako ganito, kasi nung bata ko, ito yung nangyara sa akin. Oh, now I understand. Now I ganito. And when I just had that piece, when I pinpointed all that, biglang may gumaan. Like, my chest became so much lighter. And to think, I mean, di ako mabigat to begin with, I mean, in my, my heart, pero mayroon pa palang igagaan. So, even now in my walk, there's still stuff that the Lord reveals to me. You know, there's still stuff that progressively gets revealed that, you know, I feel so much better. I, I wasn't feeling bad, but meron pa palang better. So I'm going to keep on moving forward. You know, so, lagi natin check yung hearts na. You know, check natin yung hearts na. There's always something, um, there's always something that we can learn from the Word. There's always something to be revealed uh, through the Holy Spirit. Hindi mo masasagad si God sa lifetime na to eh. So spend your lifetime really searching to know and understand Him and have that intimate relationship with Him. So, you know, I, I just wanted to share that because sobrang sobrang na bless ako. Sobrang ramdam ko lalo yung love ni God. Na even those childhood issues niya, that your childhood issues ko, you know, nandun yung love niya. You know, he, he's given me more peace, more grace for that situation. And you know, and and I got a lot of good teachings coming up because of that. Go ahead, brother. You were sharing something? No, I, I just wanted to say I noticed that uh, like when you were giving a lesson just last week, I think, I just saw you, parang, parang you look lighter. Like parang something, sabi ko, parang something looked ano, lighter with you. Parang I don't know what it was, but sabi ko, that's, that must that be the glory. Hindi ako gumagamit ng filter. Huwag kang magalala. Wala akong wala. No filter to, no filter. Natural lighting. Yeah, like, like I saw, man. Like there's just something. Like you know, the more you just gonna, but like your spirit man is gonna manifest in your flesh, just like what Sis Ida was talking about. They balalu silang gumaganda. At toto, talaga lalu lalu kayo gumaganda, de ba? Like may mga Amen. mga may mga bagay, eh, para bigla ng gaga ali. Eh. And like I don't know, there's so much more. You know, you might just develop biceps or you know, like, <laughs> something <laughs> supernatural. <laughs> Alam mo, Secho, awesome, kaya man. kita nang mimiss eh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but anyway, you know, you guys, I, I really hope that, um, I hope that each of you really, you know, have that yearning in your heart. Makilala siya. Na makilala yung, hindi lang about Jesus, pero really to know Him and know Him intimately. You know, there's so much more. There's so much more in the Word. And there's so many more beautiful things. The grace upon grace. And glory to glory in your life. And dami pang gustong i-manifest ni God sa buhay. So, you know, let's, let's keep moving forward. One step at a time. Take it one day at a time. And continue to depend on the Holy Spirit. And always guard our hearts. Diba? So, um, before I close in prayer, you know, I just want to I just want to heads up you guys also na, na um, we got great things coming up we got great uh, progress uh, we'll be having a ministry center soon and you guys are all invited to come and worship with us and you know and just um, yeah at least you got a place of agreement and whatever we will have upcoming workshops again another one will be in May so we'll keep you posted regarding that and um, yeah yun lang. you know I just wanted to Share that with you guys. I'm so blessed because I didn't know this soon. You know, I'm, I mean, I knew that the Lord was planning that, but I was like, oh, okay, now na Lord, oh, sige. <laughs> you know, now na, okay, the Lord says now, I'll, I'll do it now, you know. So, yeah, I'm excited to connect with you all. I'm excited to meet with you all personally. I've met uh, a lot of you personally already, but, you know, I'm excited to get to know you guys much better. So, yun lang. Let's close in prayer. All right, let's pray. Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for this group. We thank you for my dear brothers and sisters who are here, uh, just listening and, and, and you know, seeking to know you more intimately. Lord. Father, I, I lift up their hearts to you. I lift up each of our hearts to you right now in the name of Jesus. And Father, just really, you know, we take this moment to just really declare, not just with our mouths, but decide in our hearts, Lord, all out kami sayo. We will not withhold anything. We will not hold anything back. Apart from you, we can do nothing, Lord. 
we know that. We desire nothing but you. We know that when we seek you first and your righteousness, all the things in this world, all the things in this life shall be added to us. That through Christ, through the knowledge, the true knowledge of who you are, Lord, everything pertaining to life and godliness is there. So, Father, we thank you for this message of, of, of deliverance. We thank you for Jesus Christ, your son, who you sent to destroy the works of the devil, who you sent to set the captives free, who you sent to heal the sick and raise the dead and give us authority. And we thank you, Lord, for, for, for giving us the name of Jesus to use, the name above all names, to exercise his authority through the power of your Holy Spirit, to exercise the gifts that you have blessed us with through the power of your Holy Spirit, Lord. And, and you know, I pray that each of my brothers and sisters will learn to guard their hearts. It's not about power. It's not about gifting. It's not about ability. or It's not about renown or, or recognition. Lord, it's about your love. It's about your grace. It's about Jesus Christ. Nothing else. Lord, I speak life and blessing and peace upon everyone here tonight. Everyone listening, everyone watching this. Right now, to the top of your head, to the bottom of your feet, I ask you, Lord, um, through your Holy Spirit to just envelop them and blanket them in your love and comfort and your joy. They may have just this really personal encounter with you right now, Lord, that their intimacy with you would just, just take them deeper, take them deeper than they ever thought was possible, Lord. Take, take each and every one of us to the depths of your love that we may know you, know you more, 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 Lord. You know, Father, so right now, you know, I'm, I'm excited to see the work that you will do in the lives of my brothers and sisters here tonight, I'm excited just to hear their testimonies of your faithfulness, Lord, of your love and your grace. And I'm excited to see the fruit that will come out of this ministry. So, Father, I speak life and blessings and peace and love and provisions and healing and freedom upon every single person here. We lift this all up to you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Praise God, brothers and sisters. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise Thank Jesus. You. Yo, photo. Thank you. There you go. Who is that you have a presence that you can make? Here. Okay. Okay. Is that it? Wait, hold on. The wait for a few more cameras to turn on. Okay, three, one, thing kind of off. I don't know if I want to adjust. Ron's gone. I don't know if I'm Okay, one, two. One more. One more. Hold on. Four insurance. Wait. One, two, three. There you go. Okay, we're good. Bye, guys. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. What an That's awesome nice. topic. Good to see you guys. Bye. See you next week.